Hi guys, Nick here from Intuitive Tennis. This is the final video of the Roll of the Wrist series. And today I'm going to talk about what happens to the wrist on the serve. The beginning stage on the serve all the way up uh, to the trophy position is going to remain the same regardless if it's a flat serve, a kick serve or a slice serve. And so let's talk about what happens to the wrist in these first two stages. So some players will have uh, different styles when it comes to the beginning phase. And they will, some players will keep the wrist straight, uh, even some players will close the racket uh, a little bit, even though I'm not a big fan of having wrist extension in the beginning uh, phase of the serve. You see beginners, especially if they have a forehand grip, they will have wrist extension in the beginning phase of the serve like this. So uh, I like actually having the strings open and having slight uh, wrist flexion with the racket. Uh, this will uh, make it easier to have the racket remain on the hitting side of the body as we take it into the trophy position like this. Once we reach the trophy position on the serve with ideally the wrist uh, slightly flexed downwards and uh, now we're going to set in place a complex series of wrist movements. One thing we don't want to initiate is an extreme wrist extension uh, because this will create a waiter serve. So we don't want this. Uh, what we want indeed is a radial deviation meaning the racket is going to drop. Our wrist is going to move to the left and there's also going to be slight wrist extension because this is the acceleration point of the serve and we don't want the wrist uh, too loose in a flexed state because we will not be able to accelerate it properly it's going to be too sloppy in other words so this is not what you want on the racket drop you do want to achieve a little bit of control and a little bit of firmness and uh, not too tight obviously but there's some degree of wrist extension uh, very minimal but yet it's there The acceleration point on the serve is when we uh, drop the racket and this is so powerful that it's actually going to uh, bring our wrist in a slightly even more extended phase uh, prior to the contact point. So what happens on very powerful serves is that not only are we dropping the racket down but you can see the racket will often uh, whip out uh, this way. Uh, you're going to see this in the slow motion footage and this is even further uh, wrist extension on this side. Uh, I'm uh, having a very difficult time uh, recreating this because uh, we as players are not aware that this is taking place. So you can take a look at slow motion uh, but generally uh, very powerful serves will have the racket slightly over to this side which indicates a slight further wrist extension uh, prior to the contact point. On our approach upwards towards the ball, uh, we're going to maintain uh, the slight wrist extension until uh, this point. And now what's going to happen is going to be true pronation, which is the inward turning of the forearm. In my case, I'm uh, right-handed, so it's going to be uh, a leftward turning of the forearm, and which starts at this position when the tip of the racket is pointing straight towards the back fence. And this is when the pronation starts and the wrist is still in a slightly extended position. It's not completely straight like this. Uh, so again, the pronation of the forearm uh, is very important starting from uh, the tip of the racket pointing towards the back fence in an on edge position. And now the pronation towards the contact point starts at uh, the inward turning of the forearm. What happens next is the contact point and we have to differentiate between the flat serve, the slice serve and the kick serve and let's start with the flat serve. So on the flat serve uh, we're going to have a slight 
ulnar deviation on the contact point. And this has to do uh, with the position of our torso. And so on the flat serve, we're going to have an open position of the torso at contact point. So in this case, uh, we cannot have the wrist straight because that would put our racket uh, head pointing towards the left. And we want the tip of the racket to point towards the sky. And you can see that if my tip is pointing straight up, I have slight ulnar deviation uh, at the contact point. And what happens next, whether we have continuing pronation uh, or not, uh, we maintain uh, this ulnar deviation all the way into the finish. And once we reach uh, maybe the uh, left pocket here, the wrist can uh, straighten back out. And so it's very important that on that flat serve uh, we maintain a solid uh, wrist position. What many recreational players will do here, uh, they will actively uh, uh, snap the wrist down or, or flex the wrist down uh, to achieve power. And this is a very dangerous technique and it could possibly be uh, injury promoting uh, to your wrist. On the slice serve, we're going to be in this exact same contact point as we are on the flat serve. Uh, so basically, it's going to be the chest, uh, you know, positioned towards the net, parallel to the net, and the contact is going to be uh, with slight ulnar deviation uh, like this. And there's two different ways to slice. Uh, both of these techniques will have the racket go uh, towards the right, maybe the right net post, and then have the racket come back around. And uh, one way to slice is without continuing pronation. In this case, there might be a little bit more wrist action in the serve where the racket will go, continue going this way and then back around like this. Another technique is a slice serve with the same swing path uh, with continuing pronation. In this case, there's going to be less uh, wrist action where the racket will go to the right, but it will going to pronate uh, this way and then come back around like this. The kick serve will have a different contact point and our upper body is going to be in a more sideways position. Therefore, our wrist is going to be more straight and not in the ulnar deviation uh, that we have on both the flat and the slice serve. And it looks something like this. And we're going to maintain the sideways position. And therefore, as we make contact with the tip of the racket pointing slightly towards the left, you can see that the wrist is more in a straight position. And now our swing path is going to be uh, going this way. And the tip of the racket is going to go up and then towards the right. And so this will involve uh, a slight ulnar deviation in the wrist. As the racket goes like this and our arm goes down, uh, there's a slight uh, wrist action here. And this is true for both uh, the kick serve with continuing pronation and the kick serve that is a slight uh, flexion of the wrist. In my opinion, uh, the kick serve with the bending of the wrist, the uh, flexion of the wrist after contact, uh, might be a problem for some players if this player is not as flexible uh, and therefore might experience uh, some wrist pain. Uh, so I'm a bigger fan of, instead of doing this, uh, usually involves a bend of the arm. Uh, you could try to continue to pronate while bending the arm and now the wrist is in a more natural position. This protects the wrist more. Uh, so instead of uh, bending Bending uh, the wrist down and the arm like this after contact, uh, you could try to maintain a straight wrist uh, while pronating and then going into a bend uh, with the arm like this. Uh, the most protective technique when it comes to the wrist is the Roger Federer kick serve technique uh, where he keeps the arm completely straight and then he continues to pronate uh, and it looks something like this. He will go uh, to the right and then pronate this way while the arm is completely straight and I find this technique uh, the most protective when it comes to the wrist.
This concludes the roll of the wrist video series. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the section below. I will be happy to respond. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.